Hey, what's up you guys, Loco here. For you today, we're gonna do the three word game on the six teams competing in the mid-season showdown. What the fuck is mid-season showdown? Well, it's basically spring split playoff, but the format of LCS has changed, so it's now called mid-season showdown. It's pretty much the same thing as spring split playoff. The winner gets to go to MSI. They don't get too much benefits other than that. I don't even know if they get a trophy or not, but yeah. So we're gonna describe these teams in three words. For those of you guys that don't know who Colin Coward is, he's a traditional sport broadcaster. He's my favorite one. I think the three word game really forces the creator to describe something in a very pointed manner. And also you have to be creative with it. So I really do like it. And that's why I stole it from him. Anyway, let's get right to it. I wanna take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legend. So you guys might not realize, but today's a very, very special occasion for Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends has finally turned two years old. In my head, the game's been out for like five years, but no, it's actually only been out for two years. It's just been really thriving in the mobile community and with just gamers in general. So yeah, it finally turned two. At the start, Raid Shadow Legends was just a bunch of cool character art and an idea then it started to blow up. You see them everywhere sponsoring other YouTube channels like mine. And on the mobile store, it's actually the number one RPG game in the United States. Over a million players play every day and there's over 2 billion battles. And yeah, it just has such a massive community of players surrounding it. And Raid wants to commemorate the two year anniversary by giving back to the players. The normal players like you guys, the content creators like myself, the cosplayers, the other people going out of their way to make art and guys on the game, just pretty much everyone in the community, they want to start giving back. But just because you've never played Raid in the last two years, it doesn't mean it's a bad time to start playing. You can still join right now and still have a very fun time playing Raid Shadow Legends. And for those of you guys that are new to the game, I'm going to have a special link for you at the descriptions where if you click it you're gonna get a lot of goodies i mean for me i'm a pc gamer through and through but what i love about raid shadow legends is being able to play on my ipad whenever i'm playing valorant tft or league of legends it's just so nice to have the ipad on the side and i can play raid shadow legends and have my champions battle when i'm dead on valorant that happens quite a lot in between rounds on tft and in league of legends when my teammates just start arguing in chat and i don't want to play the game anymore raid shadow legends is the perfect game to accompany you when you're playing all these intense games. So one thing that's kept Raid Shadow Legends so lively in the last two years is the consistent flow of content. There's going to be six straight weeks of anniversary events and tournaments starting from March 1st all the way to the middle of April. And also they're launching their first ever clan versus clan battle. So if you're in a clan and you want to challenge other clans, you can do that too. And lastly, they're releasing a champion in the badass looking Shadow King faction, which I cannot wait to see. So if you want to get started, just click the link down in the description and you're going to get a lot of free stuff. You're going to get an epic champion named Jotun, who's amazing for Doom Tower, 100k silver, 50 gems, and 3 ancient shards so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you're starting. You'll find all your rewards in the inbox for the next 30 days only, so just get started right away. And with that, let's go back to our video. So before we get right into it, I kind of want to talk about the regular season a little bit. I think the season was very interesting. It was a lot shorter than a normal season. And also, once again, we had to play online due to COVID and all that. Some teams did play from their facilities, which makes it better than last year, but still online play is online play. And I also do think the season being shorter has a lot of weird side effects. It's really hard to distance yourself from the pack and all the teams were relatively tight in terms of results. The best team at 13 and five, the worst team at 11 and seven. So I think getting to see the teams play it out in a best of something format is really going to show who improved a lot more and who's better than who. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, the first team we want to start with is C9. And the three words I have for them are master of all. I think C9 in almost iteration, including this one, has been the most versatile team in North America. It's something that really separates them from a lot of the other teams. They have a variety of styles that they can pull off. They can and will play through any lane, which is something very, very unique in North America. When you look at the overall C9 team, I think it was very easy for the team to be very bottom and mid focused. They have Zven, they have Pert as their main carries, and let's just play through them. Fudge. 
you're a very new player, just be on an island, play tanks, and yeah, we'll do this very proven, very traditional bot lane, mid lane, team fight carry style. But C9 didn't fall into that. A lot of times, Fudge was very critical to their draft and they play towards top a lot. I think it really shows how unique C9's approach is in North America and how willing they were to trust in a rookie compared to the massive amount of experience and talent that's been proven on their team. Also, their coaching staff, I think, had a huge effect this season because they were doing stuff that a lot of other teams wouldn't be doing in terms of itemization, in terms of champion picks. C9 is willing to go that extra step to get the draft edge. And to do that, you need talented coaches and talented players. It's not simple as this champion counters this champion. So why don't we just play this champion? There's a limited resource called time. In practice, you need to put practice on that champion, playing different kinds of champions in solo queue, or you can't pull it out. It's not like the coaches don't know what champion beats what, they do know, but sometimes there are limitations in players and there's limitations in trust and in comfortability in terms of playing out those champions and playing it out where you need to consistently snowball or you're gonna fail. And I think C9 did an excellent job of that. They played the most variety of styles this season compared to any other team, and they had a lot of success doing it. One thing that I am very scared for them is their laning from the side lanes. I think Zven and Vulcan can flub laning a lot of times, and the same thing for Fudge. They are good laners, but c 9 style is very much based on getting a lead, snowballing that lead, and a lot of times they can fumble that. I think it really showed in the TSM game where Blaver got massively ahead, but their comp was very much based on snowballing that, and once they got stonewalled a little bit, the comp started to fall apart, and yeah, that's something that can happen in playoffs also, especially for Fudge. I think Fudge has shown really good promise, but he's still a very much a new player, and C9's biggest rivals are Team Liquid, where Alfari has been such a standout. So yeah, I think that's a place of, I don't want to say weakness, but it's a catalyst in terms of C9 versus TL, where I do think both teams will end up in finals, and how Fudge is able to stand up to Alfari is going to be a huge, huge critical turning point in terms of which team is going to show up. We got to see him 1v1 the other solo laner. Uh, not on screen, but he just went in the late game high pressure situation. Nar going to attack the gangplank in the level one. Nails him with the ultimate full combo and him killing off Fudge here. So yeah, there you have it. C9 is the master of all. They played so many different styles. They played so many different champions. They've shown every single member on the team can carry. So they deserve those three words. For 100 Thieves, I have Leg Day only. I think 100 Thieves is a very strong bot side team. I think FBI and Huhi are one of the best bot lanes in North America. Stolen Hecker and Multi here for Bioma. Dreams goes in, finds a knock up one to two. Onslaught of Shadows into the back, still looking for the flag quest support. FBI takes the kill. 100 Thieves gonna be outplayed here with a little bit of damage coming out from Johnson. Fly quest still looking to find Ooh. more damage. Everybody's dropping back and forth here as we've got ourselves a three for two. 100 Thieves losing out in the fight now in the aftermath of that 3v2 fight, but the Gnar ulti is not ready. Closers in hot pursuit. Run, stun, job is done. Palafox has to try to get out of there and he will successfully get away to safety. But they are a team that's quite figured out in terms of what they're going to do. They switched out Demonte with Ryoma when Demonte started to struggle. I don't even really think he struggled that much. The week was two and one and they got demolished by Cloud9 and Perks, who is probably the best mid laner in North America right now. So it wasn't the worst of it. Both last year and this year has been frightening on it. And as a result, usually Olaf is just not left available to him. Perks jumps forward with the distortion, but he barely misses the AOE on distortion. So now he Man. flashes after and he grabs the first blood. Demonte, what are you doing? But the problem is when TF gets banned out, Demonte just does not look that great. And right now, mid lane is really versatile and there's a lot of things that can be played. And for 100 Thieves, they thought they'd have a better shot with Ryoma other than Demonte. I don't love this team. I think this team is very predictable. I think where they're good is very obvious. And I also am not sure if they're getting the most out of Someday. Someday's often their weak side, which is something he is good at. I think he's one of the best weak side top laners along with Impact. But a lot of teams improved. 100 Thieves looked really, really strong in the preseason lock-in tournament. 100 Thieves looked really strong. They had 
their base figured out from when the four core was on Golden Guardians. Play around closer, play around bot lane, and team fight. FBI will carry us. And someday slotted in perfectly to that. But other teams, when they didn't have their shit figured out, they got shit stomped by 100 Thieves. But later on, teams like TSM really improved, teams like C9 really improved, and they figured their shit out. Where 100 Thieves had what I would say a limited ceiling because they already had the four core, they already knew how the team was going to operate. So they had a really strong start, but their improvement rate hasn't been the same compared to the other teams. And also, if you replace a player mid-season, your improvement rate is not going to... I don't want to say it's not going to get better because you can definitely get better by replacing a worse player with a better one. But is Ryoma really that much better than Demonte? So I think 100 Thieves just reset the clock on themselves and I'm really, really worried for them going into playoffs. I don't think they're going to look that good. I think uh, a lot of the other teams are going to show different stuff and 100 Thieves, they're just very, very limited. That's the three words I have for them. Leg day only. Gotta work on those guns, boys. So the third team we have is Team Liquid, and the three words I have for them is Liquid is solid. I think solid is such a good word to describe Team Liquid. They're just very solid. They're not as creative as C9, but they're not worse than C9. I think they are just very predictable and very standard. They're very good at objective setups. They're very good at vision control. They're very coordinated. A lot of the plays they do is, I would say, predictable. Get flat prio, move mid, get mid prio, use that mid prio to invade with jungle, get vision, and then die bottom, or set up around dragon. What they're doing is very, very textbook, but they're just better than other teams at doing it. Get every button you can to survive. So I agree. Well, uh Okay, good ult to stay alive for Tactical. The flash, he's not going to follow, but now here comes the re-engage. Big stuns coming to the front line. Centaurin has to run away, though, as well as the ult he was popped. Ryoma TP's onto the feathers, and that means he dies. That TP also sucked, and now it's Gnar <laughs> trying to go mega. Has to be careful. Transforms. Ult's onto three, but it's not going to matter. The shot's going to kill him. He's going to burn down the corrupting potion of all things. And 100 Thieves lose that fight 2-0. When you get priority and you move to Herald, when you get priority and you die bottom, when you get priority and you set up around Dragon, there's very limited counterplay to it. All these objective setups, there's a narrow pathway leading into it, or you have a numbers disadvantage. So the team that set up first is going to be ahead. And that's kind of what happens with Team Liquid. They set up better, they're more coordinated, they have really strong laners in all three lanes, and also they make a lot less mistakes than other teams. So right now, the style I described, the Team Liquid style, the standard style, is perfectly fine way to play in the meta. So yeah, I think Team Liquid is just gonna stick to their guns, make sure they do what they've been doing in the regular season, and just bring it in playoff. I really don't think they need to do anything weird. I also don't think Team Liquid is gonna be a team that's gonna improve greatly from regular season to playoff. I think they're just gonna do what they have done and get good results. So the three words I have for TSM is there's still a maybe. And for those of you guys in the comment that's gonna say it's five words, you try to come up with an acronym that's still TSM. I think at this point, we can say without a doubt, TSM is a top team. The way they started was not top team. I think they are by far the most improved team. They really didn't know what they were doing with Huni. He finally found the role on the team. They weren't really supporting Spika in terms of draft, in terms of lanes playing around them. They finally figured that part out. They knew they had a strong player in Power of Evil. And they're finally starting to unlock Power of Evil. And I think Sword Art also seems to have found this role on the team. He's a lot more freed up in terms of being able to roam, in terms of being able to play make. Yeah, I just think TSM has improved across the board more so than any other team. Maybe they didn't improve more than other teams. It just looks like they improved so much because their start was really terrible. But yeah, that's just TSM. I think people have a tendency to overly shit on them when they do bad and overly praise them when they do well. But from an objective point of view, I think they were a team with a lot of strong pieces that they didn't know how to fit together and they're starting to fit those pieces together. There is something I really, really want to highlight about TSM, and it has to do with their team fight. I think TSM has the team fighting, what I want to say, team fighting strengths in Power of Evil, in Lost, in Engages from Spika, in Engages from Sword Art, to challenge the top teams like Cloud9 and TSM, but they're a little mistake prone. There are sometimes drafts where I'm like, what the hell are you doing TSM? There are sometimes in-game situations where I'm like, what the hell are you you doing loss? What the hell are you doing Huni? They are definitely way more mistake prone than those top teams, but without those mistakes, 
they can actually match up to the top teams. And there is one thing that I do think TSM does better than C9 and TL, which is Baron. It's not necessarily their Baron control and how they set up around Baron. I think Team Liquid is actually better than them at that. It's how they fight around Baron. They know how to fight once they start a Baron. They know how to turn. They know how to collapse on the team doing Baron. And also, Spika is actually really fucking insane when it comes to Smite fight. Hey, this Baron's going down very quick. We'll see if TSM can get in. Power of Evil is on the flank with ultimate available. Flash and ult goes in, shuffles in three. Is that the team fight they need? Blabber stuck in the pit. In comes Hecarim. Team Smite Masterclass. You better believe it's going to be happening. That was beautiful. TSM crushed the battle. Four to two. Get out of here, Cloud9. It's TSM's time to shine. So, yeah. TSM, they definitely have a shot to challenge C9 and TL. I think out of all the teams other than C9 and TL, if I had to pick one team that can be in finals, it's going to be TSM. Going to be a very interesting playoff for them. I really want to see how much they've improved from regular season to playoff because they are the team that's shown the most improvement and the most consistent, better play week by week. Maybe they can even get better in playoff. I really, really did not think in 2020 summer that TSM was going to win. They definitely did not look like the best team in NA, but they made it happen. And this new iteration of TSM, they had a new head coach. They had so many new players coming in. I think all the pieces they have are finally starting to click and be comfortable. So yeah, not the favorites, but let's not count them out yet. They are definitely the dark horse of this playoff. So for Dignitas, the three words I have for them is we want Dardoch. So for those of you guys that don't know, Lina infamously said nobody wants Dardoch and Dignitas ended up picking up Dardoch. And yeah, they're seeing a lot of success. They are the Moneyball team. There's this huge discussion in North America about using imports, not using imports. And Dignitas is the one team that's not using any imports at all. They're all NA and still made playoff, still can put up a fight. To describe their playstyle more, it's... Mm, Still jungle focus. Dardoch is getting a lot of draft resource. Dardoch is getting a lot of lane resource. And also, in terms of like the team setup, it's very good for Dardoch. Fake God and Soligo are both, I don't want to say passive players, but they're passive personalities. They are way more willing to listen. They are way more willing to cater to their teammates. And yeah, Dardoch is someone that does a lot better when he's given the resource, when he's given the trust by his teammates. When he basically has the ball, he does better. And on Dignitas, there's not a lot of ball hogs, so Dardoch gets to have the ball a lot of time. And you've seen how well he can do when he does have the ball. I think Dardoch has shown exceptional play on so many different jungles. And right now, I think there's a lot of strong junglers in the meta. Things like Udyr, things like Olaf, things like Hecarim. These jungle champions, when they get ahead, they will run over the other jungler and eventually the other team. So Dignitas, really good place in terms of meta. But here's the problem. In terms of jungle edge, it's really hard to maintain that edge as the season goes on. People study your pathing and also the meta gets figured out a lot more. I don't think Dardoch's going to be able to keep all that edge that he had previously in the regular season. Not saying he's going to be shit in playoff. What I'm saying is once teams have had the time to study what you're doing and how you're consistently getting ahead. Basically, when they have film on you, it's just a lot harder to pull off what you were doing before, especially if it's something like jungle. In lane, when you're better than someone, you just understand the lane status better. You understand the wave control better. You know how to hit skill shots better. You understand the matchups better. And that's not something that can be easily studied and implemented. But in terms of jungle, the pathing, like the kind of invades that you're doing, the kind of setup your team is doing for you, that's something teams can study and really counterplay against. So that's where I'm really worried for Dignitas. I don't want to forget about Dignitas's other four players. I still think they're strong. Neo, Fake God, Aframu, Soligo, they're all decent laners, they all are playoff worthy players, and they also play champions that other teams kind of don't, so it helps with Dardoch's draft resources a lot. For example, Fake got playing things like Mordekaiser, Aatrox really helps in terms of letting him draft later and still not getting like counterpicked so hard that he's just blown out of the moon. I don't have that high of hope for Dignitas. I really like what they did this season, and I'm glad that Dardoch's finally in an environment where he can flourish after what happened on TSM. But that's pretty much it. We want Dardoch. 
So the last team we have in playoffs is EG, and the three words I have for them are genius or madness. I just don't really have high hopes for EG in this playoff. I think the only teams that they can potentially beat are 100 Thieves and Dignitas. Other than that, I think EG is way worse than any of the other teams we've talked about. I'm gonna be nice and describe their style as strange. They play things like Jungle Mundo, Nico Nid, Nico Support, Jin, Varus, Echo. There's nothing really wrong with playing these champions, but I think a lot of the situations they're playing them in is kind of random, and the whole package doesn't make sense whenever they're drafting these champions. It seems like the players are getting to play what they want. It seems like Peter Dunn has a lot of faith in his players, and he's trying to draft compositions that are more comfort for them. And there are times where it works, but a lot of times it just feels really awkward. I also think this kind of style is not great in a playoff situation, especially in a best of series. You can win a few games in best of one playing these wacky things, but when you don't have a solid base and it becomes more of a gimmick, it just does not work in best of five situation. I think we can commend them in them making playoffs. A lot of other teams didn't make playoffs. I think a really key team that didn't make playoffs is FlyQuest. They invested a lot into the new players after their old team blew up. I just am not very excited for this EG team. I don't really like the way they play. I really think it's going to be gimmicky and in playoffs it's going to blow up. There you have it. If I'm wrong, you can flame me down in YouTube comments like you guys love doing. So overall, I really am looking forward to the playoffs. It's a lot easier for me to watch playoffs than it was for regular season. There was just so much content that I had to catch up on, but I do want to consistently make videos for you guys. I'm going to start with one a week and then hopefully bump it up to two a week. I'm finally getting settled in my job. It's been really busy, but I'm squeezing in the time because I love doing content. I think I will do League of Legends content for a very, very long time. It will never be a full-time thing for me ever again, I don't think. I just don't enjoy that stress. But I want to do videos like this and hopefully, just maybe, get back into streaming also. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And one final thing, I'm not crazy, I'm just so go. Yeah, Bye. Yeah, let's go. I ain't the first with the curse, with the thirst that I wanna be better, not worse, man, it hurts. I'm on this earth with my words and I put them all together in cert, cause I wanna have worth. Working hella hard till they put me in the dirt. Gonna go far, man, listen to my words.